and away we go. A good start for Analdi at the front. And wow, the third place driver of Abrugier nearly hitting the second place driver. That was very, very close. Up the hill they go. Into the top corner. So far, so good. No major dramas. And we know what Arnaldi likes to do. He likes to break people, and then he'll just put in consistent lap after lap after lap. Down the main straight they go. Running order, one, two, three, four, five. So it's standard running order in the top five. I'm not going to look back to the other ones because I want to watch the leaders. Up the hill they go. Arnaldi already making a small break, so it's looking like on this early stage, Arnaldi is having the better of it. Catalani struggling just a bit. Vibrugier there looking for a way past. Patrick Fullman there in fourth as well. As the rest of them, very, very close at this early stage. Just one minute gone, 29 minutes to go. We will indeed try to grab the winner of this one and get some words out of them. But not everyone speaks English, so we'll try our best. And Vibrugier trying to look for a way up Catalani, and they had a little bit of a clash, but it ends up on their four wheels. Down the main straight they go. Arnaldi is opening up a bit of a gap. One second lead last time round. Up the hill they go. Into the top corner. Arnaldi had a one second lead last time round over... Catalani, who's looking a little bit better now, a little bit more settled. Maybe just that um, early race nerves or the tires weren't quite up to temperature or, you know, some people are slow starters than others. But 1.1 second lead for Arnaldi over Catalani. Then it's uh, Verbergeret, Fulman, Repetti. That's your top five. And it, it's very, very close. I mean... The whole field is together apart from Arnaldi, who has pulled away out the front by 1.4 seconds now. Fabrugier looking for a way past Catalani. He knows he's got to get up there because it's once, once Arnaldi gets going, you're not going to close up on him unless you're super quick. And it kind of looks like uh, Catalani now has got the message. He's pulling a little bit of a gap on Fabrugier. 1.5 though. So Arnaldi still just a half of a tenth quicker than the rest of the field last time round. He is enjoying the luxury of not having anyone in front of him. But he goes across the curbs going up the hill. Didn't seem to cause him much trouble though. And the second place driver of Catalani now has opened up the smallest of gap on Vibrugier in third. Who has Fulman and Feldman right with them. 1.3 second lead for Arnaldi. These guys know. They don't want to let him get away. If they want any chance of winning the European Championships, they have to keep Arnaldi in sight. As I said earlier, Arnaldi is the master of putting in fast, consistent laps. Doesn't seem to make many mistakes. Down the main straight goes Arnaldi and the rest of the field. 1.6 second lead around. So Arnaldi taking a half of a second or so out of him last time round. Up the hill they go. Arnaldi runs a little bit deep into that corner, the top corner, through the switchbacks now, crossing the line, through the Samba S's, climbing up the hill into the Jeep Sweeper. Down the main straight they go. The lead for Arnaldi is 1.8 seconds over Catalani, Fabrugier, Fulman, Repetti, Feldman, Vasily, Salon, Martelli, Lisso. Every driver on the track still has a chance of winning at the moment. Anything could happen. 25, well, just under 26 minutes to go. 1.9 second lead for Rinaldi. That's what I'm saying. He just puts in fast after fast after fast lap. You know, it's not a lot, you know. But, I mean, if you're doing a lap a tenth of a second quicker and you can do 20 of those in a row, well, do the math you're going to pull away from the field, and that's what he's doing. Getting a little squirmy out of the switchback, and then bounces across the curbs. So let's see what it is now. 1.7, so like I said, it was a, a little bit slower for Arnaldi last time. 0.19 of a second. Of course, we're still focused on the positions 2, 3, 4, and 5, which is where battles are how he Absolutely. They're still running in numerical order. Very equally paced, all these drivers. Apart from the eight car, 
So that is Feldman who has gone up. But Repetti has got past him now. So the running order, well, let's get him across the line one more time. I don't want to take my eyes off it and look at the uh, the scoring screen. Arnaldi over the line now. As the rest of them come across the line, the lead is 1.8. It's Arnaldi, Catalani, Verbrugier, Fulman, Repetti, Feldman, Vasily, Salon, Martelli, Lisso. 24 and a half minutes left. And a big slide for the five car. Does a 360 Repetti. I think he's going to lose a position, but he keeps going. He does indeed lose a position. And a 2.1 second lead now for Analdi. It's starting to shape up for a battle for the podium as our leader is just sneaking away at the front. But Catalani in second has opened up a small gap on Fabrugier in third, who is being pushed by Patrick Fulman, the Danish driver. The whole race, Fulman looking quick, just can't find a way past. Looks up the inside there, but Catalani still out in front. Verbrugier just got the power down just enough to hold Fulman off. Into the big sweeper they go. Hanging right, up the hill, on the top of the track, into the big stopping corner now. Both of these drivers perfect around there. Fulman quick through there. Quick again into the Samba S's. They're on to the Jeep Sweeper now. On to the main straight they go. Fulman, two wheels on the grass. All the while that Vabrugier and Fulman are scrapping out for third place. Catalani in second has opened up a small gap. And that enables him to focus on going as fast as he can and not having to worry about defending at all. So Fulman desperate to try to find a way past Vabrugier. Looks up the inside. Almost found a gap. Switches to the inside down the straight, but Vabrugier has enough power in that car to hold off Fulman. And there's a coming together for the people behind Fulman. So that's Feldman, Repetti, and Salon all having a little bit of a mess. So there's going to be a gap back to the five car now, who is Repetti, who is up to fifth. At the front, it's Arnaldi, who's checked out. Catalani in second with a bit of a gap back to the battle for third between Vabrugier and Fulman. Top of the hill they go. The big stopping corner now on the switchbacks. Over the line now into the Samba S's. And on to the Jeep Sweeper one more time. Down the main straight they go. Vabrugier has a, a little bit of breathing space, but... Fabrugier's car is a bit quicker down the straight. Fulman's definitely quicker on the infield. Lots of, uh, lots of screaming down in the pit lane. Up to the Jeep Sweeper. We're following this battle for third. Again, Fulman looks up the inside line, but Fabrugier's car has enough power to take the sweeping line onto the main straight. Back onto the infield. Fulman has to hope for a little bit of daylight and try to take advantage of it. Into the big stopping corner they go. Into the switchback now. 21 minutes and 25 seconds left. Onto the Jeep Sweeper one more time. Fulman just stays right behind Fabrugier that time. Tight with him through the sweeper. Right up with him, up the inside. Fulman takes over the third spot. I think that was sort of Fulman just showed him his nose and Fabrugier didn't want to spin off the track so he sort of checked up and said all right you know what finally you've uh, you've undone me now let's see if Fulman has anything that he can do to close down onto our leaders Arnaldi out in front he is 1.7 clear of Catalani who was three seconds clear of that battle for third that Fulman now has taken control of We'll give it a couple of laps. Then we'll check times. Down the main straight. Fabrugier's not going anywhere. He's going to follow Fulman around for a bit. Repetti's there in fifth. Bit of a gap back to Feldman in sixth then. Up the hill they go. This is where Fulman was quicker through the infield. But maybe Repetti was, or maybe um, Catalani was just... Maybe Fabrugier even was just sort of 
being a little bit conservative, didn't want to make a mistake, but Fulman now opening up a bit of a gap. Getting a little bit squirrely, coming off of that bottom corner. Up the hill they go. At the front now, let's have a look at the times. Are now the out in front, two seconds clear of Catalani. We get Fulman across the line. He's 2.9, so a little bit closer than it's Rougier and Repetti rounding out the top five. 19 minutes, 35 seconds left. Fulman now with a definite gap on Vibrugier in fourth. Let's look at the times. And Arnaldi is pulling away just a bit, doing a best lap of a 24.2. Fulman now, let's see what he did last time around, a 24.4. That was a little bit quicker than Catalani, so he might have a chance of closing in on Catalani a bit. He's definitely pulled away for this battle for for third place. He's own in third place now on his own. 18 minutes and 55 seconds left. Arnaldi still has a 2.4 second lead over Catalani in second. But Fulman now is on the move. He is quicker than Catalani in second. And Catalani will see it. He will see Fulman coming. Remember, we've spoken about this many times. This is not just a flat out go as fast as you can race. They have a limited amount of fuel on board and it has to last 30 minutes. No fueling allowed during the race. If you run out of fuel, you're done. 18 minutes, 15 seconds on the clock. Are now the out in front will be pacing himself, just keeping Catalani the same distance behind. It is Fulman, in my opinion, who has to push on maybe faster than he wants to try to go if he wants to uh, improve on his third position. Just under 18 minutes left. This is a 30 minute race. We're approaching half race distance now. Let's look at the gaps again. Still 2.2 from Analdi to Catalani. 2.8 from Catalani to Fulman and 1.5 back to Verbrugier in fourth. Well, we're now looking at Verbrugier and Repetit. So if you can Keep your eyes on the gap between Fulman and Catalani for us. I will indeed. We've got a mechanic running, so someone's parked up on the grass. I believe that's the eight car. Did you want to just drop back one again, Harry, and we'll just see if there's anything going to happen there in the next couple of laps whilst uh, Dave looks at the gaps between Catalani and Fulman. Indeed, the gap between Catalani and Fulman has actually increased now to 2.9 seconds. So Catalani has seen what's going on. And Catalani has spun on the top of the track. Fulman is right with him now. Go forward two cars, please. That's definitely the battle on the track now. Arnaldi has released of the pressure. Fulman giving Catalani just a little bit of a nudge going, hello, here I am. Down the main straight they go. Into the first sweeper. Now the tighter corners. And Fulman with a burst of speed. Closing right up on Catalani. So I don't know. Catalani was on his own. Made the mistake without anybody around him. Maybe just lost a bit of concentration. Thinking, pushing on a bit, trying to expand that gap over Fulman as they come off the Jeep Sweeper one more time down the main straight. Arnaldi's gone. He's checked out. He's up the hill. It's his race to lose. And now Catalani has actually gapped Fulman just a bit on this infield section into the heavy break in top corner. It's always a knife edge. How hard do you push? How much do you burn your tires up? How much fuel do you use? Still a great battle for fourth and fifth between Vibrugier and Repetti, but we're watching this battle for second. Now it's calmed down, and Catalani has got going again. Fulman clattering across the curbs through that little infield section. Catalani looks like he's gapping Fulman just a bit. So maybe Catalani was being a little bit... Uh, reserved earlier, saw Fulman come, pushed on a bit, and then lost concentration, made a mistake. As I say that now, Fulman right back with him. Momentum is everything in this racing. You have to carry the speed around the corners. Bouncing across the curbs, you know, you could ruin the next straight and one or two corners after that. Fulman right with Catalani now. Up to the Jeep Sweeper they go. On to the main straight. Fulman sliding out on the grass. Fulman now is going to lose 
third place, fourth place, and Fullman down to fifth now. Fullman rejoins in front of a recovering number eight car who gave him a little bit of a nudge. And we got the replay. Fullman runs out wide. You see he's on the marbles. Lost it. Tried to save it. There was no save in that. He is very, very lucky to have gotten that off of the grass. Well, Catalani breathing a sigh of relief now as he has no more immediate danger. There's always danger, trust me. 14 minutes and 25 seconds on the clock. Arnaldi down the main straight. His lead is 4.9 seconds. This is why he is known as the best driver in the world at the moment because he gets out in front and he just puts in clean, consistent laps, conserves his tire, conserves his fuel. That's what I was saying earlier. These other drivers were doing their best to try to get ahead of him in the semifinal and hopefully, you know, cause disruption to his his ability to put in these quick laps, but they couldn't do it in the semifinal. Arnaldi started from pole and hasn't looked back. 13.45 on the clock. Arnaldi in first. Catalani second. Giovanni Vibrugier third. Eduardo Repetti fourth. And recovering Patrick Fullman in fifth. 13 and a half minutes to go. You can see Andrea Catalani on your computer, or on your TV even. <laughs> 13 minutes and 9 seconds left. Catalani now with a bit of breathing space. In second. And who's that off? That is Patrick Fullman. He has stopped going down the straight. Mechanic has picked him up. The slow walk back to the pit lane is telling me He's had a mechanical failure. I know Patrick Fullman. He's not the sort of person to give up. Terrible, terrible luck for Patrick Fullman. The lead for Arnaldi over Catalani is 4.7 seconds. Fabrugier in third is 3.1 back. Then it's Repetti in fourth, 1.1 back. So that's possibly a better race to look at the moment. They've just come out of the Samba S's onto the Jeep Sweeper. That's your battle for the final podium spot. Just over 12 minutes left. And these two have been duking it out the whole race. There's a little bit of argy-bargy and a little bit of spinning between some other cars and allowed this little bit of a gap of 1.1 seconds last time round. Make that 1.2 now between Fabrugier and Repetti to build to that level. 11.45 on the clock now. So Repetti is going to have to find something special to try to close down that gap or Fabrugier is going to have to make a mistake. Arnaldi is not known for doing that. Out in front. 4.9 clear of Catalani who has no immediate pressure but he can see the third place driver of Vibrugier out of the corner of his eye who has just gapped Repetti just a bit more 1.3 now 11 minutes left through the Samba S's and up towards the Jeep Sweeper goes this battle for the finally final podium spot down the main straight they go into the bottom sweeper now on the tighter infield sections Repetti will know he is running out of time. He will be calculating in his mind how hard he's pushing, how much tire he's used, and whether he should push on and risk running out of fuel, or should he settle for fourth. There's a lot that goes on in a racer's mind, especially at a big meeting like a European championship in a beautiful setting like this. 10 minutes and 20 seconds left. The gap last time round was 1.5, so for Brugier finding his rhythm, and it's 1.6 now. So a little bit further ahead is Brugier over Repetti. Mechanics yelling up more instructions. 
We have a car spun off, but it's not a contender. Rejoins just behind Arnaldi. The gap between Arnaldi and Catalani is 4.6. So Arnaldi will see him. Uh, Catalani's car is easy to spot, bright yellow. He'll see where he's at, and he can know when he goes around a certain corner, he can see where the second place driver is, and he'll just try to maintain it there. Hey, there's no need to do any more than that. If you've got a race under control and fuel could be an issue, you're, you're going to lift and coast a bit more. You're going to try to carry the momentum around the corners. You're going to brake a bit lighter and try to carry corner speed. So nine minutes to go now. You can hear the yelling that goes on. They have to yell because there's no radio communication allowed between the pitmen and the driver. So they will be telling instructions, things like, you know, you're pushing too hard, you gotta worry about fuel, or you're not pushing hard enough. They will know how much time is left because the computer tells them that. Yes, Paul? I just say we are now following the leader, Arnaldi. Arnaldi has been out in front since the beginning. He did have some pressure from the two car of Andrea Catalani, who's just 4.4 behind. So once Arnaldi had gotten that gap around three or four seconds, he's pretty much kept it there. Like I said, he can see out of the corner of his eye and he'll judge it. When he's in this corner, you know, second place is in that corner, and he'll speed up or slow down as needed. Eight minutes and ten seconds left. The gap is 4.3 seconds between Arnaldi and Catalani, and it is 3.8 between Catalani and Fabruz, and 3.3 between Fabruz and Rapetti, with Martelli, Feldman, Lissau, Salon, Vesely, and a retiring Patrick Fullman. 7.45 on the race clock now. Arnaldi is putting on a master class of racing a 1.5 on-road car. He's in cruise control now. He's not going to take any chances or do anything stupid. We'll try to get an a interview with him. I know he doesn't speak English well. Maybe we can get someone to translate for us. We'll try our best for you. 7.15 on the clock. Arnaldi on the infield. Hangs a right. Going up the hill. His lead now is 4.4 seconds over Andrea Catalani. On the switchbacks now. Crossing the line into the Samba S's. Hangs a right. Up the hill he goes to the Jeep Sweeper. And down the main straight. Just seven minutes left. I like to say at five minutes we go into crunch time because we saw in the some of the semifinals earlier people run out of fuel at about the six minute mark. It's normally around five minutes or less you start to see people running out of fuel whether they got their engine mixtures wrong or their driving style you know wrong. Maybe they pushed too hard too early or weren't quite paying attention to their driving style. With six and a half minutes left Arnaldi did not have any of that trouble in the semifinals. In the top corner he goes, through the switchbacks, 6.15 on the clock, crossing the line now, here comes Catalani. The gap between first and second is still 4.4 seconds, with Fabrugge in third, 4.2 back, then Eduardo Repetti, 4.1 back, Martelli still in fifth, six minutes left. Arnaldi now heading for the Jeep Sweeper. We are on lap number 60. He went 74 laps in the semifinal win that he took earlier. Five and a half minutes left. Arnaldi showing why he has that number one on his car. Out of the Samba S's, into the Jeep Sweeper he goes. And down the main straight. 5.15 on the race clock. So just about into crunch time to see if these drivers have got things just right or maybe they had that fuel mixture a little bit wrong and have burned up too much fuel. 
we saw a lot of stoppages in our semifinal. The gap now is 4.2 seconds. So Arnaldi keeping it just over four seconds. Doesn't want to let uh, Catalani get much closer than that in case he has a little bit of a mistake or a half a spin or something. And on the second camera, we can actually see the visual gap. There's Arnaldi going through, then another car, and that second place, Catalani going through the picture now. Four and a half minutes left. The gap still 4.3 seconds. And you can see other cars having trouble with traction now as mechanics still barking orders up at their drivers. We are in the crunch time now. You don't often see these drivers make mistakes, but so I was surprised to see so many people run out of fuel in the semifinal. Four minutes left now. Arnaldi hangs a right. Up the hill he goes. On the top, back straight, into the heavy braking zone. And if you watch the attitude of Ronaldi's car, he's not taking any chances. He's not taking too much curb. He's not too hard on the, uh, on the accelerator to keep the car in line. If the car is spinning up, that means the revs go up and it's using more fuel. Maybe even a little bit of lift and coast, trying to conserve fuel. And whilst doing that, his lead has increased to 4.6 seconds. Three minutes and 20 seconds left. Running order, Alnaldi, Catalani, Verbrugier, Ripetti, Martelli, Feldman, Lissau, Salon, Vesely. Leader on lap number 66. As I said earlier, he did 74 laps in his semi-final win. Three minutes left now. No signs of anybody running out of fuel yet. Out of the Jeep Sweeper goes Arnaldi. Down the main straight. I don't think I've seen him put a wheel wrong all race. Up the hill he goes. He has a five second lead now. Second place driver bouncing across the curbs. So maybe his tires are just screaming too much. And as I say that, Arnaldi has a bit of curb shot there. Two and a half minutes left. So just a few more laps here. And we will crown 2017 European champion. Arnaldi is in the hot seat now. Over the line. One more time he goes. Out of the Samba S's. Up towards the Jeep Sweeper. His lead over Catalani. 5.0 seconds. Two minutes left. And as I look at Catalani, up on two wheels, coming out of the Jeep Sweeper. So it looks like Catalani is having a bit of trouble, and he doesn't want to make a mistake because not too far behind him is Fabrugier. We'll stick with Arnaldi, but I'll keep my eye on Catalani and Fabrugier, who they are separated by three seconds. One minute 30 left now. A couple more laps. Arnaldi hangs a right, climbing up the hill. Catalani comes out of the sweeper. There is Fabrugier at the same part of the track now. Into the Samba S's goes Arnaldi, all our leader, into the Jeep sweeper. And down the main street he goes. He is on lap number 71. We now have one minute left. Into the top corner. Arnaldi is in cruise control now. He will not take any chances. You see him giving the curbs plenty of respect. No need to try to make up any time or do anything silly. Had a little bit of a double steer coming onto the main straight. Just going to give everything plenty of respect. This lap and one more. Up the hill he goes. Or maybe two. Let's have a look. Arnaldi might make it through. In fact, he will, looking at the time. He'll make it through for a victory lap. He is on lap number 73, so he will do 74. And Fabrugier, a little bit closer on Catalani, just 2.4, but too little, too late. Arnaldi up the hill, 10 seconds on the clock. He will be the only driver to make it through for the next lap. Three, two, 
one. Time is up. They're finishing as they cross the line. Arnaldi is on a victory lap. Down the main straight he goes. You can hear people clapping. We'll call it when he gets to the finish. Four more corners. There's one. End of the heavy break into two, three. Up on two wheels at the end. Four corners later, Arnaldi is the European champion. You want me to say something? Okay, of course. You gotta have a bit of fun with it. We're just waiting for Arnaldi to come down. I know he doesn't speak much English, but we'll see if we can get a few words out of him and uh, congratulate him on his win. He's being grabbed now, and he doesn't want to do it. Come on over. He does, he's a bit shy. European champion, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Was it a nice race? Yes, very, for me, very nice. It's very not easy. This final is my, it's impossible or easy. My, it's a lot of pressure and my mistake is very good for me. And your car looked very good, very stable. Yeah, yes, my, my car is very good for long run. It's, for uh, one uh, lap, it's not very fast, but it's very easy for, for, for final. For, uh, yes. And another win for Genius, very happy for Noaco? Ah, yes, for my company Genius, is uh, very, very happy. A lot of work this year. It's, uh, Iraq is paying in, in uh, victory. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much for talking to us. European champion Thank 2017. You. Bonjour, la France. Thank you.